Good morning, my friends. Today we're solving multiples by Philip Newman. This is the gas puzzle that was originally posted on February 19th, 2024. And we have standard Sudoku rules, so we're placing the digits 1 through 9 once each in each row, each column, and each outlined 3 by 3 region. We also have killer Sudoku. That's these dashed outline cages in the grid. Each of them has a clue in the top left corner. And the clue tells you that that is the sum of the digits within that cage. So for instance, the digits in this cage have to sum to three. There's also a standard rule in Killer Sudoku. You can see it's written on the screen right now that says that digits can't repeat in a cage. In this particular puzzle, we don't actually have to use that rule to solve because all of our cages are contained fully within one row or one column. But in general, in Killer Sudoku, that is a requirement. We also have another variant called ratio pairs. That's these black dots. Black dots indicate that um, the cells surrounding them are in a 1 to 2 ratio, which means that one of them is twice as large as the other. Because it's ratio pairs and not just ratio Sudoku, what that means is that we could have other pairs of cells elsewhere in the grid, for instance, like here and here, that don't have a black dot, but that still have that relationship. So there's no negative constraint. We don't know for sure that we've been given all of the possible dots. So we can't make deductions based on that. So I see two places that we could get started with this, and I'm going to kind of explain them both at once. So one place to start is in Killer Sudoku, there are certain cage combinations that are certain cage totals that only have one possible combination of digits, and a two cell three cage is one example. So whenever you see that, you can immediately mark in a one and a two. The other thing which kind of overlaps with this is that whenever you do a ratio pair of Sudoku, a good first place to look is wherever you have strings of more than one black dot separating cells that see each other. So for instance, in this top row here, because there are actually only two ways to do that. If we have three cells that all see each other separated like that, one, two, and four, or two, four, and eight. So we can use both of those facts here to figure out that that has to be one, two, four. And because of the six cage, that's now a two. So let's take a look at the other places where this happens. So six, well, actually, we can just start with this three cage, so that's going to have to be one and two. Six, made out of two cells that um, are in a one to two ratio with each other, is going to have to be two and four. When it's six, this is relatively quick to observe just by kind of going through possibilities in your head. One neat trick, though, if you see something like this where you have a two cell cage that's fully occupied by two digits that have that one to two ratio, one way to very quickly figure out what digits go in it is to divide the value of the cage by three, and that will tell you your lower digit. So six divided by three is two. That tells us our lower digit is two, and so our other digit is twice two or four. Either way, we now know this is a two, four cage, and we can fill this in. Down here, 12 divided by three is four, so our digits here are four and eight, so this is going to have to be a two, four, eight, and that gives us a four in the six cage. And here, we're going to have two and four again, now, because we have this 4 here, we can go ahead and fill those in. We could have also, if we didn't have that 4 yet, we could have observed that this can't go 1, 2, 4 because we can't put a 1 into a 2 cell 12 cage. So the next thing that stands out to me is that we have more ratio pairs dots that see a lot of digits that could normally appear on one of those dots, so they have become quite restricted. And in addition, these are in cages. So because this is a nine cage, this is going to have to be three and six. And because these are all nine cages, we're just going to go ahead and fill those all in with three and six. So what next? So I'm looking now for the next most restricted thing. And I see two options. One option is that I have a lot of digits in these columns and in these rows. So I could, in theory, start looking at the intersections of them. The other thing I think of that I could do is to start looking at some of these small cages that might have fewer possibilities left now, even if they had more to begin with. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I like killer Sudoku. I don't mind a little mental arithmetic, so we're going to take that approach. So here we have a six cage. There are only two ways to do that in general, two and four and one and five. Two and four is taken, so let's make that a one of five pair. Over here, we have a 15 cage. There are two ways to do that, and we haven't eliminated either of them yet. So there's 6, 9, and 7, 8, and I suppose we could eliminate an 8 here, which gets rid of a 7. That's not going to help us much yet. So something a little bit less kind of clear that I notice, but that will still be helpful to us, is that we have this 9 cage. 
Now, there are a lot of ways to make nine and two cells. We could go one and eight. We can't do that here because of the one. We could go two and seven. Again, can't do that here because of the two. Now we could use three and six or four and five. Now I'm always a little bit reluctant to use this next deduction in gas, but because I'm explaining this in a video, I wanna go ahead and share it with you because I do really like this and I think it's worth looking out for. If this was a three, six pair, we would have a problem because we would no longer be able to put anything into this cell. And in general, whenever you see a bivalue, that's what this is called, a cell that has two possible values called a bivalue cell. Whenever you see a bivalue that has kind of both values that could possibly go into a cage, you have to be careful about making the cage have both of those two values because that creates a problem with that cell. So in short, this can't be three and six, this must be four and five. So we're gonna go ahead and fill that in. Now over here, this nine cannot be four and five. It also can't be one and eight because we have an eight in the region. So that leaves two and seven and three and six. Now three and six has the same problem we had before. So this must be two and seven and the two in this column tells us what way around that's going to go. So where to next? Uh, this can't be a six because we have a six, three pair in the row. So we can clean that up a little bit. This 15 can still either be six, nine or seven, eight. This nine has to be four, five, for the same exact reason this one had to be four, five. No one, no two, and no three, six pair. And this is a deduction that people have complained bitterly about. And I think that you're well within your rights too if you have never seen that before, just because I don't think it is, um, I don't think that it's trivially obvious that that elimination would happen, especially if you don't necessarily have the by value pencil marked. But now that you have been kind of let in on the secret, look out for that one because you will see it all over the place. Now we have a 12 cage and there are three ways to make a 12 cage. And I like to remember these as they always have kind of a lowish digit and a high digit. So we have either three and nine, four and eight or five and seven. Now we've already gotten rid of two of our high digits and we need a high digit. So the only remaining possible high digit is nine. So that's now going to be a six and a three because that's resolved. So still in this region, we need one and five, which we can go ahead and place because of the five there. Let's go over here and do the same thing with the 12 cage because we need a lowish digit here and we've already used four and five. So this has to have a three in it as its lowish digit. And that takes care of that in a very similar way. Now we need to place a seven and an eight in this region and the seven in the row tells us which way around they're going to go. Awesome. Now these columns are getting very, very restricted. So let's see what we can do with these. We need to place a five in this column and I'm going to put it here because of the five in this region. Now I need to place a seven and a nine in this column and those will go there. I don't know which way around they go yet. These have to be six and eight and that does let me eliminate six and eight from this cell. And if that's not six or eight, then that can't be its partner, seven or nine. So I still need to place a five and a three in this row. And five can only go there, three can only go there, which tells me which way around that goes. I still need a seven, eight and nine in this region my two eights tell me where the eight goes, and that's going to resolve this, which is going to help me in a moment, because now that I've done this Sudoku, I know where the nine goes in this region. Now let's place an eight here, and then our remaining two digits are going to be a one and a seven. Now, because this falls into the nine cage, we know that this can't be a seven, because seven would have to pair with a two, which we've already used. So that's now a one eight pair. And so our nine cage here reduces to four and five, which we can resolve right away with Sudoku. Now in this row, we still need one, two, and seven. So by Sudoku, that's gonna be our seven. So to fill this nine cage, that will have to be a two. That puts a one in the other nine cage, which gives us an eight. Now we need three, six, and nine here. So that's gonna be a three, that's a six, nine pair. Now a 12 cage, we can no longer do three and nine. We can no longer do four and eight. We've learned some stuff about 12 cages in the course of solving this puzzle. This will have to be five and seven. In this column, we still need a six or a nine. And in this column, we still need a three, six or nine. The only thing left is a one, which can only go there. Now in this row, we still need a seven or a nine, and that's going to have to be a nine in that position, which resolves this cage. Now we're gonna place a five and resolve the five, seven cage. Here, we can't do one and eight. We can't do three and six. We can't do four and five because of the digits that are already there. So this is definitely a two and seven. And I also notice while I'm looking over here that this is resolved thanks to this nine. 
Now let's place a 1 and a 6 to finish this region. Okay, now I need a 1 in this row, which will go there, and that's going to be 6 or 9. And now I need to resolve this somehow, so I'm kind of scanning for digits that share with these by values, and I see this 8, which resolves this 6-8 pair. In a perfect world, if you were really solving at speed, you would catch all of those things pretty much as soon as you see the by value go in. Um, you would resolve it instead of kind of letting it sit as a by value. I find that I get better with that with more time and practice, and I more reliably am able to kind of think through the consequences of a move that I've just made in the puzzle. But still, I do often find myself kind of typing in by values or try values and just kind of leaving them, not realizing that they've been completely resolved. I think that that's something that is just a fact of life when you're trying to solve relatively quickly. Even when I'm trying to explain and do a really clean explanation, it happens. So pat yourself on the back whenever you, uh, whenever you spot something that I didn't while I'm doing this walkthrough. Anyways, it's been a pleasure. Um, thank you for hanging out with me today. And I hope you enjoyed the puzzle and I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll see you next time.